Okay. So, talking about getting your film distributed. Uh, does anybody have or working on a project currently? No, maybe. Yeah? Yeah, I post. Okay. Uh, feature, short? Short. Short, awesome. Um, cool. What's it about, if you don't mind me asking? It's about a guy uh, who holds an audition for a drummer for his band. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So, getting your film distributed. Okay, so, like right off the bat, um, hang on a second. Is that blurry? You guys see that? Cool. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it says we need medical degrees. <laughs> well, this is, first of all, off the bat, I'm going to say, uh, I'm really nobody, and this is just stuff that I've, I've heard about or like listening to the podcast or reading about. So I'm just, the way I'm presenting to you is just like, based off of my experiences, but uh, I feel like everyone uh, can get your own experience. So like, just because I tell you one way to do something doesn't mean it's the right way. You gotta go out and like find your way to do things. Or you, if you wanna get your film distributed, go out and find a way to get your film distributed. But the point that I wanted to make with this list was, this is the top 10 paid jobs. You can see nothing in there about film. A lot of people get that, that mindset that once I make this feature film, I'm gonna make big money when it gets distributed or when you get that distribution deal, you think, oh yeah, the money's gonna come in, but that's not reality. Uh, a lot of uh, feature film people, or ah, feature film filmmakers, independent filmmakers, um, they do it for the passion, not for the money, right? So uh, just something I wanted like you guys to take into consideration. Okay, yeah, this is the stat that uh, we got so there's like 5,000 to 7,000 independent films that are produced a year. And only four or five of those films actually land those huge distribution deals. Um, a good film uh, or a good example I can think of right now is uh, Tangerine. Have any of you guys seen that? Okay, it was shot on a iPhone, the entire film, and they landed a huge, like, like a ten million dollar deal for their little iPhone shot, eighteen year old director film. Amazing, but that doesn't happen for everyone else. Okay, so things to think about when you're looking to get your film distributed or in the process of making your film. Who is your audience and does your film fill a niche? Okay, have anybody, any of you guys seen Kong Fury or Turbo Kid? Yeah. Okay, what can you guys tell us about the movie? Like, what, who's their audience? Super retro, with people into super cheesy 80s kind of stuff, cassette tapes and that sort of thing. Right. VHS. Right. But they're not like a, uh, it's not like they're trying to copy an 80s film. They're like their own thing. They're just like a, a homage to 80s films, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so they understand who their audience is and they market to their audience. So. Uh, when they did their Kickstarter campaign, they knew who to go after, right, to get funded, and they knew who uh, wanted to see this. And actually, Kung Fury is a short. It's not even a full feature film, and you don't see a lot of this on Netflix, but Kung Fury was brought on Netflix just because they had such a huge audience base. Netflix wanted that audience base. They wanted to pull those people to Netflix, so they put Kung Fury on there. Uh, second point I want to go to, what's your budget? And They'll tell you when you're making a film, if you're if, if it's estimated it costs like two hundred thousand dollars to make, you want to make it for one hundred fifty thousand dollars to make money. Uh, what I hear from listening to podcasts and stuff, uh, films they <laughs> either have to be on the low end or the high end to make money. In other words, if you really want to make money, you have to have like a budget of thirty million dollars, or you have to be on the low end and have to be able to make a movie for going two hundred. Uh, thousand. If you do something in the middle, like five to ten million dollars, you're not going to make any money. Is what I've been hearing. And I, the reason why I say that is because you have five million dollars. Okay, so we have this much money to do whatever with, right? And the production cost gets out of hand, and then what ends up happening is you lose money because you don't have money, enough money to promote your film. Whereas those thirty million dollars plus movies that you get backing from different production companies, they usually have enough money to do the advertising. Uh, to get the information out there that they need to, to find their audience, basically. Another thing you gotta take into consideration, what film festivals you're sending your independent film to, and do you get positive reviews? It's something you uh, have to think about. 
If uh, your film's getting positive reviews or winning top 10 film festivals, then uh, you're gonna get probably a really good deal. If it's not, then you gotta go to plan B and think about how you're gonna distribute this film. <laughs> the goals of your film, uh, what's your message, what you're trying to get across, and I think that factors into uh, uh, distribution as in like, uh, if you're making a documentary uh, about something you really care about, um, let me think of a good example here. Come on, someone give me a good example. Pull fire something. trucks. Fire trucks, right. <laughs> Who's the audience out there for fire trucks, right? Firemen, probably, and maybe like families or little kids or something like that. So you gotta think about who your audience is when you make a documentary about fire trucks, right? If you wanna sell your film and make money off of it. Uh, international appeal, and I say Christmas puppy movie because Everyone can relate to Christmas, and everyone can relate to a puppy. <laughs> so that seems to be, uh, uh, so if you make a movie where you need a lot of uh, close captions or something that um, uh, maybe, I'll give a really good example here. Uh, the movie Shin Godzilla, which was a Godzilla movie that just recently came out in Japan. I'm a big Godzilla fan, but when I watch the movie, I'm slightly like lost because I feel like the movie was a political movie about stuff going on in Japan, whereas I have no clue about politics in Japan. So if you make a movie in the US and it's about US politics or US life, it's really not gonna transition well over to international markets if you wanna get your film distributed over to international markets. Understanding social media, something I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, it's a necessary evil to get your, your film out there to find your audience, um, yeah. How likely is your film going to perform uh, theatrically? So uh, sometimes uh, you like it goes back to the positive reviews and, and, and knowing what you've got. If you know you're not going to have a successful run theatrically, then you shouldn't aim to do it. You should just aim to go to uh, DVD sales or, or video on demand route, something like that. Okay, and this is really important. Can your film be monetized for merchandise? I made a documentary about fire trucks. So maybe to promote my film or to sell products from my film, selling fire truck toys or something, right? Uh, so the example I also give is when Marvel uh, uh, got the right from Sony's Spider-Man, it was like they, they didn't pay anything. Like Sony signed it over for cheap because Sony wanted Marvel characters to put in their movies, correct? But Sony gave them merchandising rights to Spider-Man. So Marvel was really the one winning here because they make all the money from any toys or anything like that sold with Spider-Man in it. Cool? Yeah, awesome. Uh, I put this in here because this is, uh, I think, something important or something I, I hear repeatedly. Uh, Martin Scorsese is a brand. Quentin Tarantino is a brand. Steven Spielberg are, is a brand. When you go see Steven Spielberg, you kind of know what you're going to get, right? Same thing with Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese. So I'm just, the point is, I'm trying to make here is like, you want to build your own brand. What makes your film an Andrew film, or what makes your film a Justin film, or whatever, you know? This talks about products for your audience and knowing your audience. Uh, this movie, Range 15, was made by a uh, uh, veteran uh, military guy, and he started out selling, um, like, uh, what do you call it, like t-shirts and stuff like that, uh, like tactical gear, things like that nature, and uh, one day he just decided, you know, I'm going to make a film. And... Um, They knew their audience. They went after veterans, police officers, military men, firemen, and uh, the movie's a zombie movie, so they, they captured it on a zombie phrase. And made a lot of their money selling t-shirts and product merchandise because they already were a t-shirt company, so they know how to sell t-shirts. So it went along side to side with their film. Uh, that's how much money they crowdfunded. And these guys, you know, no experience with filmmaking. It was just a guy, he was like, you know, I just want to make a film, and I want to make it for me and people who are like me. Um, so yeah, made a product for their audience and sold it to their audience. Uh, 
know this is not really on the distribution side, but this is something that like, I wanted to, uh, everyone to think about. Uh, filling a niche in a niche is what I said here. But anyways, what I'm referring to is like knowing your audience, going back to like the fire truck theme. Uh, I know who is going to watch this movie. And nobody, maybe nobody's making documentaries about fire trucks, right? So you're, you're capturing in that corner that no one's ever tapped into. Now I'm using yoga by Adrian because uh, what these people do, uh, they did yoga for people who were not comfortable with their body image to go to yoga classes, so they created online course and YouTube videos for people to watch at home. So instead of you going out to a yoga class, you can do everything in your house. They got like, when they started out, you know, nobody really was watching them, but they just kept producing quality work and just kept producing numbers and numbers of videos. And now eventually they have 2.5 million subscribers and they make a yoga uh, course for all different types of uh, individuals. They have yoga for golfers, manual labor, yoga for teachers, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and they own their own production company and they, they operate it themselves. So I thought that was really cool. All right. This is uh, my movie, uh, Black Eyed Children Let Me In. Um, like I said, I want to talk about my experiences with distribution. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out with this was uh, uh, the artwork. Um, artwork and titling is extremely important. And this is a perfect example. When you see this, you guys know Friday the 13th movie, right? Yeah. So when the, uh, this is Sean S. Cunningham, when he, he uh, came up with this poster when he was pitching the movie Friday the 13th, he had no story, no cast, or anything. All he did was pitch a poster. He picked a title, and he picked a poster, and he ran with it. And that's how Friday the 13th got funny to go. All right, going back to my movie. I got, um, I was contacted by uh, Sonovo Avengers, uh, and, uh, Basically, I did a Kickstarter campaign, and I was on the looking for like a grand to uh, get my movie finished. And uh, I was contacted by Sonova Ventures, who mostly do um, horror movies. And they saw I was doing a movie on something that no one's really touched on before. So uh, uh, they were like, hey, look, there's not really any features out there like this, so would you be interested in getting uh, distributed once you get a finished product, right? So Snow Ventures is what they call it, an aggregator. Ag uh, somebody say that word for me. Aggregator. Thank you. Okay. And what they do is they'll take a bunch of movies, like just a bunch of films, and they'll just throw it out there, and they'll hope that one film will make enough money to kind of take care of all the other films, and that they make money. Um, so like, it's good because you know, maybe if uh, you didn't really do a good job of finding your, your fan base or whatever, or uh, building an audience, you can get distributed. And, you know, another film kind of carries you. It's bad because uh, it's not really, like, uh, your film's not really being picked up because it's good. It's just being picked up because they just need whatever they can and they just want to throw it out there. So it's not really, like, in your best interest. The best thing for you to do is to market it and get it out there yourself. Uh, like I said, they act like a sales rep. Um, they have preset deals with other distribution companies, and that's how they get your film distributed. Uh, so basically, Savona Ventures, they have a deal with uh, Gravitas Ventures. Uh, I don't think I have it. Let's go open that page. Anyways, you can, uh, they have a deal with uh, Gravitas Ventures. Have anybody ever heard of Gravitas? It's like a little, their logo is like a little napkin and it just has purple writing. Okay. They have a ton of stuff on Netflix, like a ton. Um, so I was really happy when I found out that was the platform, or that was the company uh, putting us out on the platforms. But anyways, these are some of the bigger movies, Thanks Killing, The Nightmare. Uh, which is on Netflix, Copsy on Netflix, Killer Legends Netflix, Brandon I think is on Netflix. Um, they mostly do documentary stuff, but they uh, do a couple independent films as well, just like stories and horror films. Um, so they have, it's really complicated. So Sonova, Sifon, 
has deals with Gravitas, and then Gravitas has deals with major video on demand platforms. Okay, and these platforms are like Amazon Prime, iTunes, Google Play, ATT Universe, YouTube, and a whole bunch more. Actually, the next picture. So this is just a poster I had made, but this is like all the platforms that they have preset deals with. And um, so, you know, it's awesome that like my film is going to so many different platforms, but later I'm gonna tell you why it's kind of a, a bad thing. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, it went on so many different uh, video on demand platforms. So the cost to make my film was about $1,000. And then for uh, Gravitas, they need what they call deliverables. So you need like uh, the rights to your film. Uh, the actors need to sign a waiver giving uh, permission to be in the film. And then they need uh, QC done by a company. Basically, they, they view, your film, view your film. They'll say, oh, you need to fix your volume here, or you need to fix the picture. Uh, grading gear, blah, 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 blah. And with Gravitas, they make you use their company, uh, which I think costs a little bit more than most other companies. Like I said, so here I paid $3,000 for that. And then Gravitas also makes you make their, or use their uh, company for the closed captions, and that cost me about $1,000. So to get my film distributed, it costs a total of $5,000. That's to make the film and to get it out there. So just to get it on, the major platforms, it cost me $4,000 um, in total. And that's something I'm gonna bring back up later. Uh, this is the reason why I kind of ran with it, because you know, oh, I just made this feature film, I'm gonna get it distributed, and I had like no clue, because I never done the research for this stuff. So I'm like, oh, my first film on every major VOD platform, awesome. Uh, and Sabono is a uh, kind of a newer, uh, company and the guy that runs it, he's really nice and he's very straightforward. Um, so that's another reason why I'm, I'm glad I went with him. But if I ever made another feature, I'd never do this again. I'd probably go a, a different route and I'm going to talk about that a little bit too. Oh yeah, another thing is uh, Sponno, they have like, uh, they keep making deals as they progress. So there's potential for me to get a DVD deal, there's potential for me to get Netflix and stuff like that. So it's not just sitting there after it got distributed the first time, there's potential to go on other platforms. This is a big thing, and I think not a lot of people know this when they make their film. It's not, oh, I just made this, I'm an art maker, I made this piece of art, now people love it, I'm gonna get a distribution deal, and I'm gonna make money off of it. But distributors do not market your film, or advertise your film on the independent level. You sold to a big distribution company, or a big production company, that's that's different, but on the independent level, yeah, you can get your film out pretty easily, but they're not gonna advertise, that's all on you. So you have to like uh, make sure when you do your budget that you budget yourself out for advertising. That's something I didn't know about, you know, so I didn't do anything about that, so um, I had to like kind of, uh, what I did was I just sent it out to a bunch of, uh, a bunch of people who review movies on their website and a lot of people were kind enough to view it and then put it up there, so that's how I kind of got my, my movie out there. Uh, with since the Sofono and Venus Ventures, uh, this is, I think, a big thing to think about. You lose a lot of percentage of your earnings. So if my film's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime gets a cut, Venus Ventures gets a cut, Sofono Ventures gets a cut, and I get what's ever left over. And I think it's like 40 or 35%. Is what you end up with? Is what I end up with. So, what I've learned, and I would suggest this if you want to get your, unless you think your film, you're making something that's going to get like, that big distribution deal or get something nice, um, this is the way I would always suggest to go. Uh, getting distribution is easy, and I would suggest using the website Distriber. And what Distriber does, is um, it's like so distributor what they do is they charge you three hundred dollars to uh, show your film to Amazon right so you have to use your own QC company and your own closed caption company but it's a lot cheaper than the four thousand dollars I paid you probably only pay about two thousand dollars to get that stuff done 
and then the extra three hundred dollars to send to distributor. The distributor keeps one hundred fifty dollars uh, of that three hundred dollars. If your film doesn't get picked up, they'll give you one hundred fifty back. But it costs three hundred dollars to send to these different platforms. So for me, if I were to make another film, I would go through the distributor. I'd pay him three hundred dollars to go to Amazon. $300 to go to iTunes, and then $300 to go to another platform. So that's, what, $900 that I'd be spending on that? And I'd hope that one of those three platforms would pick it up. And the best thing about that is distributor just takes my $300. They don't take a percentage or a cut out of my film. So the only person that would be taking a percentage or cut out of my product would be Amazon, iTunes, or whatever platform I put it on. So that's why I suggest uh, distributor. And then, this is really important, I think. DVD is not dead. Um, look for a DVD deal. In 2016, it made $17 billion. That's pretty good. That's ridiculous, actually. Um, actually, uh, I remember talking to the uh, owners of the Sabrina uh, Ventures. He told me that uh, VOD is a platform to go, DVD is going to die. And then when I just heard these numbers, I was like, oh, man, I wish we kind of went like a DVD route. Anyways. All right, explain that. Uh, this is something important. Uh, don't send your DVD or a link of your film uh, to a distributor until you've uh, premiered your film at a film festival. You'll never get your film uh, a, 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 the actual release if you do this. Because uh, uh, of the rules and stuff like that. You, you just don't show them to the distributor. Go to your film festivals first if that's the route you want to go. Let you know my film's not really made for film festivals. I just want to go straight to distribution. Then, then it's okay. Uh, use film festivals as a way to promote and to premiere your film. Right? Bill your film at the right time and at the uh, right place, right time. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. So to build hype, to build you know. Uh, uh, to build hype, to build an audience, you want to like wait until the film festival to, to premiere your film. You don't want to like uh, get a distribution deal and then try to do film festivals at the same time. Half the time, the film festivals, especially the top ones, won't accept it. Um, so you have to go through them first. And um, uh, yeah, the film festivals they give you a lot of coverage, uh, press coverage, attention, uh, and they, they build up the image of your film. And it also help, kind of helps you find an audience maybe that you didn't have before, or uh, find an audience that um, uh, you were looking for in general. Oh yeah, once you get accepted to the top film festivals like Sundance and stuff like that, they tell you you gotta hire a PR firm, an attorney, and a producer's rep. Uh, this is something I keep hearing or seeing. Uh, things to think about. Uh, so like I said, the advertising of the film is not with the distribution, it's with you. So if you're uh, premiering your film at a, a film festival, you want to make sure that you work and, and strategize and get your film where it needs to be before it releases on that, on that film festival. So get the hype build up, uh, you know, get your audience attention there, and uh, you can't just show up and expect to land a deal, like I said at the bottom here. Like I said, you should know your audience better than anyone. Uh, you should know how to market to your audience, uh, how to get your art out there in the right hands, right? I suggest having a distribution plan and pre-production so you, you should know what you're gonna do with your film uh, before you even start making your film, right? That's, I think that's really important. 2% movie making, 98% hustling. Uh, this is uh, a strategy that some filmmakers do, uh, and I'm getting this from um, Indie Film Hustle, the guy that runs Indie Film Hustle is a podcast, it's a website, um, if it's something, it's a good resource, so if, if there's something you guys want to learn about, like this is a really good place to go. It talks about directing actors, it talks about um, distribution deals and getting your film distributed, it talks about building an audience through social networking and stuff like that. But anyways, he just released a film called This Is May. And uh, his audience that he was going for were, were actors, and not just like actors, like struggling actors, because that's what the, the movie's about. 
uh, Meg's this actress who um, is struggling to get work, and so that's his audience, right? Actors and, and people that are maybe in the Hollywood business. So uh, uh, what he did was he only told people that his film's going to be on iTunes. He said, if you want to watch This Is Bad, you need to go to iTunes. The reason why he did that was because on, upon release, if iTunes gets like a huge fluctuation of people watching a movie, like, uh, so This Is Meg gets released the same week as a bunch of other comedies, but a lot of people are watching This Is Meg, iTunes will actually promote that film, as in like, actually will give your advertisement to get audience to come see it, because they, hey, there's something here, people are interested in this. So what he did was, uh, he tried to just get all this uh, people that are gonna watch the movie to iTunes so that the numbers in iTunes go way up. Because if your film goes to a bunch of different uh, platforms, then you'll never get like the ratings that you want because so many people can watch it on so many different levels. 10 people might watch it on Amazon, 10 people might watch it on iTunes, instead of being 20 people watching it on iTunes. So that was a strategy that I thought was really, really smart. The only thing I didn't like was he strategized towards iTunes, which, uh, I don't, who watches movies on iTunes? Is anybody? No, yeah, you do? Yeah. I would suggest Amazon. Uh, you know, like just seeing the numbers I get from my film, uh, like Amazon Prime is the way to go. Um, yeah. So, I'm done with my movie. I thought like, oh, it's finished, it's out there, but it's like never over. There's always like, uh, promoting you have to do, I'm like constantly thinking, oh shit, I better promote this because the numbers start to go down. I'm like, okay, I gotta do something to see if I can get these numbers back up. So I feel like when you make a movie, it never like goes away, it's constantly on you. And there's other uh, filmmakers I know, uh, guys out in, in Baltimore, and you know, one guy, he's, he has six movies, and his first movie, he is like still promoting the crap out of it, and those are like 10 years ago when he made it. So like it never goes away. So you're constantly, promoting the crap out of this stuff. Um, like I said, go out, learn as much as you can, listen to podcasts, I gave you a really good one to go to. Any film hustle, and then there's, uh, shoot. It comes to me, I'll remind you. But any film hustle is the one I listen to all the time, it's, it's awesome. Um, oh yeah, another thing I wanted to make a point of it, a lot of people think if you need uh, a big name star in your film to get it out there, you don't need a star. Uh, you just need to do the groundwork, you need to do the research, and that itself will get you out there to uh, get your film distributed and make you money. I was just going to show you the trailer. But you guys want to see the trailer? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> the point I was trying to make with the trailer and the poster was that uh, I think that I'm just like, this might be like narcissism or something, but I just think my film did well because of the trailer and because of the artwork. Uh, that's in my opinion. Oh, you s sorry. What's up, guys? Oh man, I am so sorry. I was supposed to bring speakers and I completely forgot.
Sorry about the sound. Um, oh yeah, biggest lesson learned, uh, budget for your advertisement, and then, uh, like I said, once it's released, send it to as many critics to review it as possible. And that's all I got. Awesome. Hey, do I have uh, any questions? Okay, so uh, I mean, you don't have to answer it, but I mean, did, so are you happy with how it ended? Or I am very.